people. I'm out in the backcountry and uh, we're going to check up on our simplex repeater that's been up there at least two years. Right now the repeater is down. It's been down since last November so that I would say that was a good five six months ago. But I couldn't make it up here because uh, it was too snowy up here couldn't get the vehicle up here and I could have snowshoed up here but why bother I didn't feel like making that trek so I waited till springtime when everything thawed out and we're going to investigate what's going on with the simplex repeater up in the hill back there which is covered up by vegetation but uh, yeah we're going to check it out and troubleshoot it in the field to see exactly what failed so if you remember from a couple of years ago we hiked up this hill and, uh, and, and placed it up there. And the build, I built it as substandard as possible. Really poor job in just putting it together with whatever I could find around the garage. On purpose, just to see what fails. You see, if I build it, you know, hardcore and, you know, over engineered it. It might be up there for a good couple of years before anything went down. But I kind of wanted to test its uh, robustness out in the field, the electronics parts. See what are the common failure items. So, uh, yeah, it went down up there. What happened was, I was way out there, 30 miles in the valley. And I went to test it, the simplex repeater. I didn't get any response from the from the repeater so uh, okay I'm like alright something went wrong up there when I got home and my home is seven miles away from the repeater I tested it from home and it was real static I mean it received my signal recorded it and transmitted it back out to the field but it was static so that's telling me two things either the transmitter is messing up on it or the antenna is messing up on it don't know which one yet but I got the bare minimum equipment here to, to troubleshoot to see what happened so uh, about a month later I tested it again for my garage and the whole thing went down no response whatsoever from where my vehicle is parked is about a mile to where the repeater is up here so uh, I tested it there still no response whatsoever so we're gonna take a little trip up there to see what happened and this is by design I want it to fail so I can see what what are the most common failure items in field in the field so when I do build an over the engineered unit I know to pay attention to the stuff that failed and double up on that particular failure uh, you're just as strong as your weakest link and I want to make all the links super strong so that's the mission for today and uh, I think I got maybe three quarters of a mile or half a mile to go all uphill which is gonna suck uh, this is an inaugural trip for the mystery ranch pack here this is a new pack that I got and it's the crew cab look pretty interesting it's uh, it's heavy, it's definitely not ultra light equipment, but the comfort is there. So I'm trading a little bit of comfort for uh, with, with a weight penalty. So the jury's still out, I'm still trying it out. So far I like it. And it's got some pretty nice uh, capabilities and uh, adaptability, which I like to have. All right, I think I rested up enough and I'm going to head back up the hill. Yep, sometimes preppers takes the path of most resistance. This is pretty high brush here. Good place for a portable repeater, incognito. Got to be motivated to go up there and steal it. To place a portable repeater, such as mine, a simplex repeater up on a hill, uh, site selection is critical. 
This one here is 5,000 feet above sea level, up that way. I got about 100 yards to go. Straight up, 45, 40 degree angle. So I'm gonna rest up for the final push here in a little bit. But like I said, site selection is the most critical uh, factor in, in having a effective uh, communications out in the field like this. In my case, this is public land, and uh, anybody could just tiptoe through the tulips up to the hill there, find a simplex repeater, and take it, which has not happened in two years since it's been up there. Uh, I think I'm the only human that's been up that hill all that time, and it's because you pretty much have to bushwhack through all this crap here to get up there, and it's not easy. Definitely have to wear boots and long trousers there because everything in here will stick you if you come up like a regular uh, hiker, hippie hiker. So yeah, that's part of the site selection there is how difficult it is to get to the site. Not too difficult where it's going to wear you out or you can't do repairs real quickly like today. Uh, but hard enough to wear the normal slacker or couch potato will not deem it worth climbing up this hill especially when they don't know what's up there it's there's plenty of other hills that have better sort of uh, scenic view but mine is very inconspicuous and really not worth going to unless you are really uh, curious but the normal drunk or teenage, you know, hangout or whatever, no, nah, it's not that type of place up there. Uh, you really have to uh, put some work into getting up there or really motivated to get up there, which the average slack or American is not motivated, in my opinion. Well, I'm at the peak here. Not at the site yet, it's a bit, a few yards that way. But I'm at, the, I'm at the peak here, finally. And yeah, comms, electronics or whatever, and prepping. The biggest ingredients to make those two work together is physical fitness. Because uh, if you can't get your ass up here to do what I'm doing right now, there's no point in deploying shit, because uh, you won't have the stamina to come up here and do it. Just saying. Or convince a youngster to come up here and do it for you which kind of defeats the purpose of being self-reliant. It's a double-edged sword. You gotta fight with it. Anyways, uh, I figure we'll walk up on it, get the first initial visual inspection as we walk upon it after about, what, a year? So I think I'm gonna have to circumvent that way to get around this obstacle here. Well, I made it to the site here. This was my approach right up through here and let's see if you can pick it out there's a couple of things maybe you should take notice it's 11:30 in the morning almost high noon and if you notice my solar panel there's a shitload of shade on it that guy ain't producing nothing i got this tree here in a way and there's the sun so in the summer, uh, this uh, tree here has bloomed into some leaves and stuff and it's blocking the majority of my peak production, sun production hours of the day. High noon and nothing. So I figure 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3, around 4, I'll probably get 4 hours worth of sun when the sun is traveling out this way. But from the morning hours uh, until, I would say, 1 o'clock, no current production whatsoever. So that's part of the problem. And uh, we had a really good, not too much of a wet season, rainy season, but uh, enough to where the drought has uh, been relieved just a little bit. We're still in the drought around here. But uh, the vegetation, I noticed there's a lot more vegetation in my hill up here than previous years. So that's one big uh, thing right there. 
I'm gonna have to think about another strategy for the solar panel to get it into uh, the more optimum production location but with that you you take away a little bit of concealability because right now you're gonna have to be you practically have to be right on top of it to notice that it's up here but uh, if I break it out in the open here it could be seen but like I said hardly any traffic up here whatsoever so I think I could get away with that so that's part of the problem that problem where I said that I got static from my garage and it's only seven miles away that way when I activated the repeater up here it's because it toppled over here it is I haven't moved it yet here's the box this is the bottom and the top is right here and here's the antenna right there so I'm gonna go ahead and upright it there she is it toppled over how I don't know could have been a critter uh, a bigger animal coming up here and toppling it over I would imagine so cuz uh, this thing is pretty heavy it's a good 20 pounds at least and it was placed on a platform right over there wedged between two rocks so that's the only thing that I could think of that happened to this here uh, right now it's not even working at all I'll test it here in a minute here but uh, that's our first initial uh, discovery as we walked up upon upon it luckily this thing hasn't bent or anything okay let's do some troubleshooting okay let's see if it's maybe low power or something test one two three four nothing okay now I know it's completely dead even when I'm on top of it okay we know that it's completely dead so I'm just gonna start from the beginning uh, as I would troubleshoot this system here uh, what makes it go dead completely is a loss of power maybe we don't know that for sure so here I have my solar panel that was up here and uh, I got it in the Sun here so it, it could be producing some some current so let's see if that's true so I got two types of uh, voltmeters here this one is an X-Tech uh, multimeter and it's got a clamp on current meter that measures current going through your wires so if, if you have a device that's working and drawing power from a uh, battery you can measure the current through that line and it lets you know if uh, if it's in action if you will I'm really gonna dumb down the explanation of this because not everybody is a radio tech out there and here is your uh, five dollar or two dollar uh, Radio Shack eBay special uh, you can get this for like two or five bucks so we're gonna try them both this thing is about maybe 200 bucks um, I don't know something like that and five dollars uh, I prefer this because I have the ability to clamp on into a, to a wire, around a wire, and measure current. If I want to measure current with this device, I have to break the circuit. And depending on what you're working on, you don't have the luxury of breaking the circuit. So uh, that's where this comes into play. You just clamp around the wire this way and it'll measure the current. Uh, with radio, it's a little bit trickier because if you transmit the power from the antenna, could disturb the uh, electrical fields of the current through the wire going through the machine here through the voltmeter and uh, it would it would uh, mess up your readings so we're not going to transmit it's going to be in receive mode only supposedly but the battery inside the portable repeater uh, I'm imagining it's dead or very low uh, voltage on it so it's going to it's going to require the maximum amount of current that this thing is producing if the circuit is correct so this is a 20 watt uh, solar panel and in full sunlight high noon sunlight it should produce around 1.2 amps of current so let me turn this guy on I'm going to use this first zero it out I have no current whatsoever. Let me 
Test that again. DC amps. Nothing. It's not producing any current whatsoever. Check the fuse. Because I have a like a 5 amp fuse in there I think. Let's see what's going on there. It's a 3 amp fuse and it looks like it's still intact. So let's measure that again. I sort of moved it around a little bit. Zero. Zero amps. So I'm not even going to bother with this because uh, I'm not even, I don't even have any current going through there. What about voltage? Do I have any voltage? Okay, so I'm going to measure voltage here. I got this little panel out off. And right at the terminals, I should expect 19 volts. Eight, 18.9, 19.2 volts. So I do have voltage there. So this thing at least is, has, a, it, it is detecting something, but I just have no current. So let's turn this piece of shit on. See what this thing measures. So I'll put it in DC voltage at the 20 volt uh, range. My two dollar, my two dollar voltmeter says 18.85. My intermediate dollar one says 18.7. You're off by 0.2 volts between this guy and this guy. But for field purposes, it's good enough. Don't sweat the technique.